I'm joined now by Dr. Hugo Rosen from the University of Colorado. You are moderating the Advances for Practitioners session, specifically talking about treatments for hepatitis C. Rapidly changing, however, what treatments will you be highlighting? So, so first of all, it's remarkable. I think between 2001 and 2011, there was really a lull in progress, at least. Um, if we looked at the new therapies, there was really nothing. And in 2011, we had the first generation protease inhibitors, which was, you know, stepwise improvement. And since then, we've had dramatic um, improvement in therapy with expected response rates, or so-called SVR, of uh, over 90%. And so um, we have three experts. We have uh, Raj Reddy from Penn, um, Greg Everson from Colorado, and then uh, finally we have Jim Trotter from uh, Baylor Dallas. And they're, they're going to discuss, first of all, how to use sofosfavir. Sofosfavir seems to be a really great drug, uh, initially approved with, um, in combination with ribavirin, but now we're looking at using it with other medications. So they're going to talk about uh, new and evolving therapies. It seems like every, every quarter, every th you know, three or four months, there's a new uh, combination of drugs that's being approved. And it's, it's really exciting for all of us who've been taking care of patients, particularly those with advanced fibrosis and cirrhosis, uh, to see their, their lives transformed. It's really remarkable. Because of all the changes, of course, the learning curve is great, but how exciting to be able to give patients an option. And really, these are treatments with very few side effects. Absolutely. Yet there are some people who are at risk. Well, very few side effects. I think we're, you know, we're waiting for the, the perfect drug. And I think in, uh, in many ways, we're waiting for a drug called Perfectivir, you know, which <laughs> is, uh, you take, you know, one pill uh, for a certain period of time and you have a 100% cure rate with no drug-drug interactions or side effects. Um, what we are finding out is that in some individuals, eight weeks rather than 12 weeks may be enough, depending on the genotype, depending on the stage of fibrosis. Clearly, the people who have advanced fibrosis are the ones that we are prioritizing in our practice, but it, but the ease of use and the high efficacy of these drugs, you know, why not treat everybody? So last year the big headline was the new drugs and their effectiveness. What would you say this year is the, the headline of what the message for people? Well, I, I think we have an additional year of experience with these drugs. We're treating special populations. I think what's really uh, exciting and provocative is the use of these drugs in patients who are waiting for liver transplant, for example, with advanced liver disease. How about patients who have undergone liver transplant and now have recurrent hepatitis C? We know that in those patients, if uh, recurrent hepatitis C was uh, progressive, they had a very poor prognosis. And so now we have drugs without drug-drug interactions with a very high efficacy rate that, again, have been transformative to the practice of transplant. I think the other thing that last year I was struck with was um, how many presentations there were about uh, patients who had an SVR, uh, cirrhotic patients, and then still went on to develop cancer. And so it's important to emphasize that just because you've cured hepatitis C, the risk of developing uh, HCC or hepatocellular carcinoma in the background of the cirrhotic liver is not zero. And in fact, what we learned from a large European study of over a thousand patients last year was that the rate of developing HCC was about 8%, and if the patient had an SVR after the age of 65, it was about 12% over the ensuing eight years. So it's not zero. And I think it's really important to understand these are great drugs. This is, of course, based on interferon-based therapies, but now with the new DAAs or direct-acting antivirals, it'll be very interesting to see what the rates of HCC development are. Clearly more research is needed, but what an exciting time. Fantastic time. Dr. Rosen, thank you so much. Thank you.